what is up precious family how are you guys today it's your girl pastora janice batista coming at you guys today with another video it is friday and i am so excited to be here sharing the word not only with all of the girls in the membership but because of my situation not being able to be in the u.s you guys already know that i'm opening up um the private videos that i do with the membership here with you guys some for the next month so that you guys can just see a little bit about what we do in the membership and so that you can get the word every week and just see what god is doing in our membership so i hope that you guys enjoy these live videos amen and just you know are blessed by them amen so just let me know who is in god bless you miss gina i miss you girl i hope you guys are doing well today um it is friday and today that um the title that the lord gave me god bless you miss corey my love god bless you sweetheart i hope that you guys are doing well today i hope you guys are excited and like i said ready for the word because god is literally poured an amazing word into my heart and into my spirit so the title for today is going to be fighting for your faith have you guys ever felt like you was on the verge of just losing it all and just losing your faith and just losing your mind and just losing your sanity you know if you have been in that situation and you just are you just want to connect with the Lord and you really want to draw closer to his presence and you just want to find out more about God's purpose. And if you've been dealing with a lot of spiritual warfare in your life, if you've been dealing with a lot of challenges, right, in your life, then this word is going to come on time for you today, right? So yesterday, um, we were walking around the city of Cuenca. You guys know that when we got to Ecuador, we first landed in Quito. We stood there for a whole week. Then we were then we're here in Cuenca for a little bit. And it's crazy because I was walking around the city, um, getting to know the city, getting my glasses, glasses for the girls, you know, just doing things. And I was walking around the city throughout the whole time. And even though I was sightseeing, okay, even though we were looking around the land, getting to know the land and getting to know new people, new faces, right? I kept interceding with the Lord and I kept asking him all day. I kept asking him in the morning. I'm like, God, what am I doing here? Like, God, who is it that we're supposed to meet? What is it that we're supposed to do? God, I need you, right, to make things clear to me, right? Have you guys ever felt like that where you just want answers from the Lord and you just want a response? You just want to be so connected to the kingdom of God and connected to God and to his presence that you almost feel like you're hungry and thirsty for it like you just waiting and waiting and waiting well that's how I felt yesterday and even when I went into one of the ladies that had did um our eyeglasses I remember seeing her there with the bible open and I'm like God is this one of the people we're supposed to meet here like God what is it that you're doing right so Gina's like all the time right so what ended up happening was, um, you know, I just kept communicating with the Lord all day, not knowing if he was going to respond back or whatever. So when we get home, I end up putting the, the TV on and the Lord literally had the Bible verse just right there in my smack in my face. Right. And I glanced at it. And this was the word that the Lord gave me yesterday. It was in Hebrews 11, 1. Right. And it says, now faith, right? Because remember the title for today is fighting for your faith, right? So I don't know what you may be fighting for today. I don't know what is it that you're trying to do. Let me put this charger really quickly because I do not want the phone to die. And hold on one second. I don't know. Um, okay, I hope it's on. <laughs> I don't know what you've been fighting for lately. I don't know what the enemy has been doing to your life to attack you, to attack your spirit. Because one of the things that you have to understand when it comes to faith, when it comes to you doing the will of God, when it comes to you being in God's covering, and God bless you, Yari, my love, amen, welcome. When it comes to you doing what God wants you to do, you have to understand that the devil is always going to attack your life, right? So that you no longer believe in yourself. 
so you don't believe in the anointing that you're carrying so that you the enemy is so good at that like he wants you to look at other people and he wants you to feel worthless he wants you to feel that god didn't create you good morning shana my lovely man um you know if you guys could just hit that share button please so other people could get on in the room i would appreciate it so much amen you know he really wants you to feel like god doesn't want to use you or he has no plans with you and that is why when you're fighting for your faith one of the main things that you have to rebuke every single day is unbelief you have to believe right that you are created for something greater you have to believe that you are chosen by god right um cory said let's say amen yeah Yes, you you definitely do. God bless you, um, Chita. God bless you, my lovely man. Um, you know, you have to believe that there is something special that God plays down on the inside of you. And when God says in his word, when you were in your mother's womb, the Lord says he formed us in our mother's womb. So he knew us and it's going to be tricky and it's going to be very challenging because you're going to bump heads with people who are also right in the kingdom of God, right? Yes, who are chosen, but you're also going to have other people that are going to look at you and disqualify you because there are people in the kingdom that when it comes to belief, they got belief in themselves, right? But they don't have belief in other people. And that is also a sin. So when we talk about fighting for your faith, right? One of the things that the Lord was really placing in my heart, even in this time, even even in this season, how you have to fight for your faith, even against your brothers and your sisters, like people who you fellowship with, people who knew you in the beginning of your faith, people who, you know, associated with you, people who don't even know you like that, but they swear that they know everything about you. They swear they know your lifestyle. They swear they know everything about your family, right, Jason? They swear that they know you up and down. They swear that they could disqualify you and qualify you and that your calling is based upon what they say and what they want. And that's the crazy part because they don't even realize that they're the ones that are fighting against God and not you. It may make feel sometimes like certain people in the kingdom of God are fighting against us, right? It may feel like they not, you know, believing in us, right? It may feel like they looking at you and just waiting for you to fail. It may look like they just want to bury you in the ground. Like they just waiting for you to flop. They just waiting for God to not move in your life and it's crazy because those are the type of brothers and sisters that literally have taken their eyes off of the lord and it sometimes it takes crazy faith like i said even for us maybe it, it took for us to come all the way on the other side of the world to be able to see things from that perspective because sometimes you have to be in a strange land. Sometimes you got to be around strange people, people who you don't know. You got to sometimes get out, right? God bless you, Irma. Amen. Sometimes it, it takes for you to get out of your comfort zone, get out, right, of that pit, you know, with those people because it's hard because sometimes who wants to pack up their house and move? Who wants to start over in a new job? It sucks sometimes to fight for your faith because you're fighting for your position in the kingdom. You're fighting, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> You're fighting against people, amen, for your validation. And sometimes it is necessary to go through those challenges, to go through those certain things, right, that make us feel so uncomfortable because we don't want to be fighting with people. Like, it's hard being a Christian because you're fighting with demons all the time. You may be fighting with your partner at home. You may be fighting with your kids. You may be fighting with your finances. You may be fighting with your health. Like, you may be dealing today with so many different challenges and it's so hard to hang on that little string of faith, right? It's so hard. Yes, right, Starla? You got to have crazy faith and it's hard. You got to have crazy faith when your bank account is running dry and you got so many plans and you don't got no money to move forward. You got to have crazy faith when your body is telling you that you're sick and the doctors can't figure it out and they don't know what's 
wrong with you. Like you really need crazy faith when your partner is getting on your nerves and y'all arguing with each other all the time and you just want to separate. You got to have crazy faith. You got to hang on that string when the devil is trying to steal your children, when he's trying to distract your kids, when he's trying to take away the blessings, amen, that, ha that God has for your life, amen. Jason said, yep, so they can um, feel good because they're living a gummy bear soft life. Yes, and exactly my point. Yep, so others, so they, exactly, you know why? Because those people, they're comfortable judging people. They're comfortable doing what they want to do and how they want to do it. And they're looking for people to co-sign with what they want because they're flesh like people. Because if they were kingdom people, they would, you know, um, basically be a little bit more welcoming to you. They would be a little bit more loving. They wouldn't be as cold. Cause don't you notice like in this generation, like you could have Christians on Facebook. How many of us don't got Christians? on Facebook that watch your life all day long like some stalkers, but they never support you. They want to know everything about your life, what you doing, how you moving, who you moving with, what's next, but they, their hands, they can never give it a like, right? They can never show you love even privately by sending you a message like, hey, what's up? Like, how are you doing? Like, that's the reason why, you know, when you're fighting for your faith, sometimes some, even some of my family members, some of my husband's family members, members they may not have understood why is this why you such a christian woman but why you move the way you move because i have to protect my spirit i have that right it is my birthright amen to protect my spirit to protect what i have and and some people may not be okay with that like some people may look at you and they may judge you and look at you and be like i mira esta or look at that one right they may label you right exactly even brothers and sisters in the faith like you know it's nothing personal but when i i will let you sometimes god will let you watch one or two of those haters right that'll be sitting there watching you god will allow them to watch you he will allow you to leave them there just so they could do what go report to the headquarters because even when jesus was about to be nailed up on that cross right god bless you wanda my love amen um Dios te bendiga, mama. amen so um you know even when jesus was nailed up on that cross what did he tell judas he was like whatever it is that you're gonna go do go do it go report to headquarters go tell them where i'm at come and betray me with a kiss you know so sometimes we don't know what judas was going through at that time we don't know what he was feeling what made him betray Jesus like that what would make you betray somebody that's good and again this has to do this doesn't have to do with Jesus and it doesn't have to do with Judas this has to do with the beginning of creation right the beginning of time the way God the father ordained the world to be right so everything had to happen amen glory to God God bless you sir amen um everything had to happen exactly the way God wanted it to happen and sometimes I know that in this process when you guys are fighting for your faith and you guys are questioning God and you guys are like, you know, dealing with emotions like, God, why you bring these people in in this season? Because sometimes, you know, it's hard to accept that, right? That God brings people into our life and into our season for a season. And we feel betrayed and we feel hurt because we like, why those people ain't walking with us through life, right? Because you expect sometimes people to be real with you as real as you was with them, right? But sometimes it's not going to happen like that sometimes God is gonna have you on this journey where you have to fight for your faith and fighting for that faith means that he's gonna look at you and he's gonna look at the people that you surrounded with and he's gonna see how bad you want it he's gonna look at you and see what's the circle that you want because God will show you the vision but he'll put the people that are gonna fit the vision that are gonna fit the mold of where you going so if you have a bunch of unbelief in your life right if you're fighting for your faith in this moment and you have a lot of disbelief in your life right now and you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in your calling and you don't believe that God is going to come through and do what he says he's going to do and you're doubting God's power you're doubting his will you're doubting you know that everything is going to happen the way he promised it because we all get those prophetic words from the Lord we all get a word that was spoken to us through a vision through a dream right God is so 
merciful. He's so graceful, right? That he will give us the prophetic word, right? But he won't give us, he'll tell us what's the assignment, but he won't make the assignment clear. And it's like a puzzle and you got to figure out the parables when it comes to dreams, right? When it comes to the word, you want to figure out like, okay, God, you showed me this word in the Bible, Excuse me, but what does this have to do with me? What does it have to do with my calling? What I need you to like speak to me and like make things clear because confusion only comes from the devil. So the devil, he knows God wants to make things clear for you through the word. This is why we are fighting for our faith because faith, right? Remember what I told y'all earlier when I was here and I was in the house, right? And I came home, the vibe, the, the word that popped up on the screen was now faith, right? Is the substance of things hoped for. So what is it in your life, right? That you are hoping for, right? When it comes to your spiritual life, when it comes to your goals, when it comes to your mission, right? When it comes to what you're, you know, put here on earth to do your kingdom mandate, right? What is it that you are seeing in your life that you're hoping for, right? Because God gave you the vision, God gave you the plans, but you're hoping for it, right? So I looked at the word substance and what it means like I, I typed in like synonym of substance and one of the things that popped up ooh, <laughs> sorry one of the things that popped up on there amen is um structure okay so what is structure like when you want to buy a house right even us while we're here we're looking around we're looking at new houses we're looking at builders we're looking at all of that right so when you want to buy a house what are you looking for right because the structure of the of the house is not only based on what you want but it's also based on the location like the houses in the U.S. ain't going to look like the houses here in South America. Why? Because the structure is different. Because the climate is different, right? So you have to build houses here. God bless you, Jamila, my love. Amen. You have to build houses here according to the climate, right? Because they get earthquakes here. So they're going to build the houses here with cement versus in the States. They may use brick, right? They may use the vinyl and all that stuff but the houses are a little bit different and I wanted sh I wanted to show you that because your faith is connected to how your 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 future is going to be structured okay so your faith has to have a vision your faith has to have a blessing on it it has to have a covenant it has to have a promise on it right so um the synonym of substance is also a reality right so that thing where it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for that means that whatever it is right that should to glory to god amen whatever it is that you're hoping for you have to make it a reality in your mind and you have to know that the gates of hell amen are going to be battling up against you they're gonna battle and contend with your thoughts right because they want your thoughts to be connected to the pits of hell and to all those demonic Christians that's around you that are not helping you that are not pushing you forward that are not giving you that word when you need it that because we all need it I don't care who you are you could be the the most holiest apostle you could be the most anointed and appointed we all suffer the same we all cry the same we all fight for our faith we're all fighting to be in God's grace we're all fighting for his grace and for his mercy and we're fighting for his will to be done in our life and when you are a connected vessel to the Lord this is why I say it doesn't matter about your title it doesn't matter about your age because you could be a pastor with the biggest titles and you could be in ministry for I don't care how many years you could be student in Buddha and everybody could know you as the most greatest apostle in the kingdom of, of the world, right? But guess what? You don't have a heart to check up on people. You don't have a heart to see how people do and you despise people. You so focused on you and what you want to do and you don't got time for the kingdom and the only time you got time for the kingdom is for you and God. It's not to check up on the sheep, right? It's not to check up on the lost flock. So you have to understand that when it is your assignment, right? 
to being this man or woman of God that God has predestined, right? For times like this, you have to be open-minded. I'm not saying that everybody's going to have your time. I'm not saying that everybody, you know, you got to split yourself into 20 people to be able to please people, but there has to be a moment where you are not criticizing other people. Those type of apostles, pastors, evangelists, you have to watch your spirit, right? Like the Bible says, you have to guard your heart because there are people in the kingdom of God that you can be a blessing to because you understand that they're fighting against the enemy. They're fighting and and dealing with spiritual warfare. They're fighting for their purpose. So you don't want to leave your fellow brothers and sisters who really want it, who really are hungry for God, who are really hungry for the will of God to be done over their life. You can't leave them in the battlefield alone, right? Being attacked by themselves. Like you got to have that type of spirit that says this is why we created the membership to give people the opportunity like this what you're watching this is exactly what i do in the membership with the courses privately right and it's a more private setting right and we just talk and we just read the word and we just you know communicate on a deeper level where you can just open up the platform to just teach people and after their tour after they get the course they ask questions they you know want you to pour into their life they're they're willing to grow they're hungry to grow so you have to be on um, we all amen no matter who you are we have to understand that there is a a, a will amen there is a purpose amen over our life and we have to help each other get there, okay? We have to continue fighting for our faith. So when you look at the word substance, that's what it means. It means you got to structure your thoughts. You got to structure your faith. You got to structure your purpose. You got to structure your mindset. You got to structure everything. You got to write it down. You have to make look at the vision. You got to make it plain. You got to write things down. What am I going to do? Because God does his part, right? But you need, like, look at what a synonym of, um, of substance means. It also means materials. It means fabric. Okay. It means body. So it's something tangible. It's something that you can physically see. It's something that you can, you know, put your hands on it and it's easy to, to have faith. Like one of the things that I noticed here, right? Check this out. We are in South America where everybody is a hundred percent Catholic. Okay. I'm talking about Catholic from the 1800s. Okay. We have walked into so many like cathedrals. Okay. That are so huge guys. I've never in my life seen churches that big. Like, okay. When I was a baby, y'all know I was baptized Catholic. Right. But now I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Right. So we still, we sightseeing and everything. Thing and we walking around and I'm like looking at these churches and I'm like, oh my God, the people who decorated these buildings, the structure of this building, the architectural work, the windows is so beautiful. It's so holy. It's so like, you know, it's, you could feel the connection to God. But what was it that I didn't like? Okay. What was the physical, tangible thing that I could see? I saw all of these idols. I saw all of these statues, right? I saw all of these things that I knew in my heart didn't glorify the Lord, but did I go in there like fighting for their faith and fighting with everybody and like, this is not of God, right? No, you have to be respectful the same way I remember, right? In my life, the way I used to worship those idols, right? How they were so holy and dear to me at that time, right? They would think like, I use, y'all don't even know this, but back in the days, like when I used to drive, like I used to have all these little saints, right? In my truck, like I literally glued it and I had them on the window. And I had like, like if you would have drove by my truck anywhere in New York or something like that, you would have seen like seven little statues right there on the, on the dash on the top, right? I drove around, had my little rosaries and everything there because that made me feel at that time that I was connected to my, that was my faith was connected to the statues. Does that make sense? My faith was connected. It was something real. It was something tangible for that time because I was fighting for my faith, but my faith was in those people, in those statues, in those gods, instead of putting it on God himself. But I 
didn't know. I didn't know that that was the way to the kingdom of God. I didn't know that that's what God literally, you know, wanted for my life was for me to put away my idols and to have faith in the one true God, you know, um, the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. I didn't know right at that time that that was, you know, what my faith was supposed to look like because I was following, right? One, the traditions, we follow things that our families did, that our aunts did, our uncles did, the great grandparents did what they believe, right? Because we come from that tribe. We come from that lineage. We come from that, right? So we automatically think, amen, right? sometimes that that's the way right is supposed to be done and when you're fighting for your faith you're gonna realize that you need something a little bit more real a little bit more tangible you need to see a little bit more because those statues are dead they cannot talk back as much as i wanted to scream and yell at those people and be like yo esos santos son muertos like yo those you know saints are dead they cannot speak but i know right of a true living God that can speak. I know of a true living God that can fill your heart, right? With all of your heart's desires that can literally, you know, make you feel happy, that can literally make your problems go away, that can literally comfort you when you're walking through the desert and comfort you when you don't understand things, right? As much as you want to tell them that like, look, Jesus wants to come into your family. He wants to bring hope into everybody's heart. He wants to, you know, challenge your thoughts. He wants to help you get to know him on a deeper level. As much as I wanted to yell that to them and pour that into their spirit, I had to do what? I had to structure my own faith, right? I had to just look at this, you know, being on the other side of the world, looking at all these different streets, all these different people, like looking at their culture and just like literally looking around at what God wanted to expose to me so that it can help structure me and my faith and where I was that so when it says now your faith right is the substance of things hoped for right now you understand why your faith has to be put in uh into the one true god your faith and the reality of what your 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 kingdom mandate or purpose is supposed to look like now you have to know that it is your job it is your responsibility to write things down and and not just let it linger there because you can't let yourself be led by your mind mind, right? Because your mind is bombarded by so many different things. So you have to clear your mind, right? You have to re rejuvenate, renew your mind every day. It has to be steadfast. Amen. Hallelujah. In the things of the Lord, when your mind starts to, you know, be steadfast in the things of the Lord, then you will realize that your, your faith will become more stronger than it was yesterday, than it was the day before, because the devil and the agents of darkness and the, you know, pits of hell, when they send their their demonic agents and demons to your house, to your job every single day, to your body, to your bank account. They know the assignment. They understand what's supposed to be done. This is why you have so many wolves in the kingdom of God that are dressed in sheep's clothing and are not helping you because you are a chosen vessel. And that's why you need to connect with ministries that are really for you. Don't run away from ministries ministries that are for you. You need to be running towards them because they're the ones that have the spirit of God to pour into your life, to pour into your growth, to pour into your mindset, to pour into your spirit. They're the ones that are going to remind you how special you are. They're the ones that are going to remind you, remember that whatever it is that you're going through, amen, hallelujah, God's will and God's purpose is going to prevail in your life. You can, amen, glory to God, the amen you can connect yourself with people who are empty or people who are dead idol worshipers who don't have amen the live the word of the living god inside of them amen they don't have the power they don't have the glory they don't have the vision they don't have the spirit of god they don't have that holy spirit living in within them and look at what the word right so look at what it says it says um in the things hope for and for the um hope 
for and the evidence of the things that are not seen. So there is an assignment. There is a purpose. There is a prosperous life. There is health. There are people, family members, kingdom brothers and sisters that you have to be connected with, right? But before you can be connected to these type of people, before God's will is going to be done in your life, he's going to do what? He's going to walk you through the desert because God is not going to give you the glory. Amen. He's not going to give you the finances. He's not going to structure your your calling. He's not going to do it without you having the foundation of knowing how to engage in spiritual warfare, knowing how to connect with real and authentic people. When you connect with real and authentic ministries, you don't want to connect with people that you go to their church and they don't even say hi to you. They don't even, you know, want to involve you in the kingdom. Like there are people, you know how many times I've tried to to invite people and bring them into the kingdom they the ones that ran away they the ones that were filled with disbelief they the ones that had doubt because i showed them they know that when they got into covenant with the pastores batista they know for a fact amen that when they got connected with us there are people that they got scared why because they're walking to us with that unbelief oh i've been through this i've been through that okay so what you've been through all this crap what do i care like i do care but i i'm not looking at your past i'm looking at you and i'm looking at what god can do in you now right i'm looking at what god can do into you today i want you to take those broken pieces right of your life and i want you i want to teach you how to make them valuable i want you to be right so comfortable with your past and so comfortable with like who you are and what you've been through so when you connect with me like for us to vibe like you gotta understand i already had to fight for my faith i already had to deal with people that criticize me because oh you a pastor and you woman and you from brooklyn and look at the way you talk and look at your accent and look at how you dress and look at you know your jewelry look at your nails like you just look so hood like you just look like you need to be born again like you know you deal with so many people that will look at you because they don't understand that God made me go through the things that I went through. So who are you to criticize me? Who are you to think, right? That you're better than me. You're not better than me because you wear a suit and a tie, right? You're not better than me because you go to church and you look all righteous. The fruits that you bear are going to tell me if you righteous or not, because I'm from the hood and I could, you know, peep that game really quickly. So people like that, that want to play in that facade, that want to play, right? The kingdom and do kingdom that way right they're not gonna get along with me because of what i carry so right because i had to fight for my faith because i had to fight with my own unbelief in myself because those people were not used by god those people were used by the devil okay to make me feel like i'm unworthy to make me feel like you know i gotta change the way i speak i gotta you know act fake and phony like everybody else no i'm not gonna go uh, you know with the wave i'm gonna fight against the wave amen i'm gonna do things in the kingdom perspective i'm gonna listen to the holy spirit so when you really led by god this is why you know you doubt this is why the the enemy comes to give you confusion this is why you 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 battling with fear right because you don't have the things that you need right you don't have you know the the structure you don't have the resources you don't have the materials that you need right to so that other people could see the kingdom and that's where the lord took me to genesis 32 now look at this it says the title for today is fighting for your faith right so i'm gonna teach you right to god be all the glory how to fight for your faith so it says that jacob amen sent his entire family ahead of him okay and spent the night alone in the camp okay it says that that night a man appeared and a wrestling match broke out do you know what's that for jacob to send his entire family ahead of him he's like nah y'all go ahead of me like i need to be back here and i need to like you know gather my thoughts i need to you know be away from my family members i need to be away from people because i'm just he must have been going through something so rough that nobody understood 
what he was going through. Have you guys ever been through that in a way where you, um, you know, didn't, nobody understood you, nobody understood your purpose, nobody understood your walk and you just feel so out of place, right? You feel like nobody's supporting you, like nobody loves you, like nobody is really there, right? To give you the kingdom things that you need. This is why, amen, it's important for you to be, for you to see the will of God and the glory to manifest over your life. You need to have a mentor. You need to have pastors. You you need to have a ministry. You need to have somebody that is feeding you every week. You know that you got to go to the supermarket every week. You know that your kids need cereal. You know that they need bread. You know they need water. Like, you know you run into that supermarket every single week. But that's the stuff that the Bible says. This is why the Bible says men shall not live, amen, on bread alone. You need to live off of the living word of God. You need to live, amen, by faith and you need to be associated with people of faith, right? People that you know God called you to, amen? And for people to be associated, like I said to me, they have to understand that I, I could I could stand on my own two feet and be ridiculed and be laughed at and guess what? I'm still gonna keep walking, amen? I'm still gonna look at them while they laughing like, yeah, you keep laughing, you keep doubting, you keep doing what you want to do in the flesh. I'm gonna continue believing in God, even if it means that I look like a fool. I'm going to continue believing in God, even if I'm alone in the wilderness and I can't even walk around people because my face is so full of shame, right? It's so full of hurt. It's so full of, you know, anger, resentment, whatever, because we all get those human moments, right? Where we feel that anger. We feel resentment. We feel mad with God. So imagine, right? How Jacob, must have felt to send his family ahead and stay alone in the camp that night and for this man who appeared what would make this wrestling match to break out between Jacob right and this man that wasn't even a man that was an angel right it says when the wrestling match broke out Jacob fought right relentlessly Okay, but he soon realized like he fought so bad, like I don't know who you are, but I don't know what's going on, but I'm about to take all my anger out on you. I'm about to take all my frustration out on you. Like you are the one that's gonna pay for all the broken pieces in my life because I'm fighting for my faith. I'm fighting for, you know, the will of God to be done. I'm fighting and I'm frustrated and I'm angry, right? It's okay to go through those moments, right? And we fight with people. We fight fight with family, we fight with brothers in the faith, we go through that. But it says that Jacob soon realized that he was up against no ordinary man, okay? So he realized like, wait a minute, I'm fighting right now against an angel. This man is not human, okay? This is an angel of God and now I'm like, oh, can you imagine what he must have felt? What would you do if you had an angel right? That was right there in front of you. And you realize that you fighting with somebody that is an angelic form. What would you do? Right? It says that when he realized he was wrestling with God himself, right? What would make him wrestle against this angel? Right? What would make him wrestle? Right? Disappointment, right? Disappointment, um, unbelief and who he is and what God is allowing him to walk through. So imagine how he felt, right? You get right. You definitely, Definitely got to respect them. But imagine being in that situation where you've been doubting yourself. Now he sees like, wait a minute, this is an angel of the Lord. I've been battling with all this doubt. I've been battling with this confusion. I've been battling with this fear. You know, I've been battling with the purpose and look at what it says. It says, and yet not even then he could win. So once he realized he could not win, right? Jacob would not give up and he cried out right? So now he realizes, wait a minute, this is an angel. So he says, I will not let you go and check this out. He says to him, I'm not going to let you go until you do what? Until you bless me, right? Amen. To God be all the glory, Alyssa. Amen. 
please share the word, hit the like button, share the, the word so other people could get on in here. Amen. And just hear the word. Amen. Because God is good and we know that God is doing everything. Amen. Today for a reason. Amen. So he tells the angel, I'm not going to let you go. Amen. Until you do what? Until you bless me. And sometimes we got to look at these stories. We got to look at these situations and we got to put ourselves in his shoes, right? We got to put ourselves in his circumstances. What would make him be like, you know, cause he had to have that moment. Amen. Where he would, where he actually realized, amen. Wait a minute. This angel has the access to the kingdom of God that I don't. He has the power to make things happen because it was given to him by God. So when we see, right, these certain things happening in our life and taking place and we feel the same way Jacob did, it is the perfect opportunity for us to fight our faith, not by fighting with the Holy Spirit because we have the Holy Spirit there. Amen. The Holy Spirit is there. He is our comforter. Amen. He is helping us make things happen. Amen. Whenever we can make those things happen, right? So we have to understand that God, he knows what he's doing. He knows why he's doing it. And he's not doing anything by accident. Everything that God is doing in our life, right? Even right now, I'm over here and I'm like, the internet just went out. Everything went out. Everything is going right out of whack. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you, amen, to have this word, this, he knows that you've been battling with your faith. You think if you wasn't battling with your faith and you wasn't going through hell and walking through the desert and walking through the wilderness alone, you think that the enemy will crash my internet just like that, just cause no, it's cause he wants to bring interference, amen, into the word of God, into the things of God. But we have the power to bind, amen, the devil. We bind him in the mighty name of Jesus and we continue, right, believing in God. We continue believing in God's will. We continue believing, amen, in God's power because God's power is not going to be dependent on what we do, amen, but what he's going to do. So you have to understand that when God created the purpose over your life to happen, he didn't, he doesn't have to consult the devil, okay? He doesn't have to consult anybody. The will of God, amen, is going to happen over your life because God God said so and it doesn't matter right amen what the devil thinks about it your blessing is going to come into your hands the will of God amen is going to be fulfilled amen over your life but you gotta be willing to fight today for your faith you cannot let go you have to have that Jacob type faith with the angel and be like I'm not gonna let you go God until you bless me until you change my circumstance until you change my name, amen, hallelujah, until you change my finances, until you change my health, amen, until you change everything, amen, that has been going on in my life, until you change my story, amen, until you change things, God, I am not gonna, you know, stop wrestling with this angel, so that is definitely what Jacob was going through, he wanted the angel to bless him, to give him, because remember, I don't know if you guys remember the story a little bit, right, but remember that Jacob was the one who stole his brother's blessing, right, he stole, amen, the, 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 his birthright. So he was looking at his brother. He was looking at how he carried himself with his purpose, with his covenant, right? So he wanted that. God bless you, Rocio, my love. Amen. He wanted that blessing. Amen. He wanted God to bless him. He wanted God. Amen to give him a double portion, but he went about it, right, the wrong way. He went about it scheming, right, with the mother, right, trying to get the blessing, trying to get the inheritance, trying to, you know, manipulate the covenant, manipulate the purpose, manipulate the glory, manipulate, right, all of the things that God wanted to do. So when we fight for our faith, we have to remember that we don't got to steal our brother's right? We don't have to steal our brother's 
covenant. We don't have to steal their blessing. We don't have to desire, amen, hallelujah, what somebody else has because what God has for us, amen, is for us. And we have to look at our our story, you know, with, with the, the same way God looks at it. Like he probably looks right at Jason's story, right? At, at everybody's story who's on here, who's going to watch this video later. My story, God looks at our story and he already approves approves the story, right? He already approves it because he created us, right? To walk through these wildernesses. He created us, right? To walk through life and to do things like this because he knew it was a part of it. He knew that he wanted us to be exact. He didn't want to change Wanda. He wants Wanda to be exactly the way Wanda is, but he wants to add on to Wanda. Does that make sense? Like he adds on to Corey. He adds on to Rosie. He adds on to, you know, all of the brothers and sisters who are on here today. He adds value, amen, to your life. He doesn't, this is why, right? He adds on to Gina. He adds on. This is the beautiful thing, right? about God, amen, and the way he does things, like he literally doesn't want you to associate yourself, right, with people who are going to have you all the time not believing in who he created you to be. He wants you to be, Jeanette, the way you are. Yes, we all, amen, have a different journey. Alyssa, <clears throat> amen, hallelujah, we all have, amen, a different journey, amen, so once you learn to embrace that journey and and fight your battles the way God is giving them to you. Because look at when men, when soldiers go into the war, do all of them fight? the same battle, the same way? No, because every man is equipped, right? Differently. So you have to use, right? Your street smart. <laughs> you have to use, amen, hallelujah, the things that God gave you, amen, so that you can fight, right, Carolyn? He has to give you, amen, those tools. He has to give you that mindset because that mindset is going to walk you through life. It's going to walk you through from victory to victory, from glory to glory. So he's going to help you overcome the disbelief of the people around you. He will help you overcome the wolves, overcome. God bless you, Pastor, my love. Amen. He will help you overcome Amen. All of the different challenges that you got in your life because now you know the assignment. You know who you are, right? You know your identity. You know who you are in the battlefield. That's why David needed Jonathan. That's why Paul needed Timothy because it didn't matter that they were young. It didn't matter that they were inexperienced, but they were willing, amen, to be led by God when other people looked at them and was like, no, they're not led by God. No, they're not called. No, they're too young. You know, they don't got the sauce. They don't got the sasong. They don't got the adobo, but there was always people who were connected with the kingdom. God bless you, soldier for Christ. Amen. There were always people, amen, that were willing, amen, to bet on those who everybody bet against. Does that make sense? So that's why when people stand next to me, you got to be willing to stand next to me and know that I am ridiculed, that I am, you know, spoken about, that people do doubt me. So if you can't stand next to me and take all that heed, then you're not going to be built for the kingdom. You may be built for church. You may be built for <clears throat> religiousness. Amen. But you're not built. Amen. To stand next to me because I need people that are going to stand next to me who can fight there for their faith. Amen. Who can fight for the gospel, who can fight. Amen. Uh, you know, against demonic principalities, who can fight. Amen. Against the rulers and the demonic principalities. Amen. That want to stop. Look, even all this time, I see the thing going like that. The internet still don't want to come back. But does that stop God's glory? No, because we need people, amen, who are going to fight, amen, the good fight and who are going to fight with power and anointing and glory, amen, so that people don't doubt and feel the power. That's why we go through hell. That's why we walk through the wilderness because when people get the assignment, when they finally understand that it's not about music, it's not about the instrumentals. It's not about the guitar. It's not about the piano. It's not about none of that. It is about the condition of your heart. Are you willing to walk in humility? Are you willing to, you know, have a concrete heart and pour it out before God, pour it out before people ready to say, God, I need, I'm hungry for the will. I'm hungry. Amen. For your, you know, power in your glory. 
story, amen, to be manifested in your life the way Jacob did. The same way Jacob told the angel, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not because I've been through hell. I've been through high waters and I need the blessing. Give me, right? How many of you feel that? Can you say that to the Lord today? Can you say that to the Holy Spirit and say, give me my blessing, right? Give me my blessing is saying to God, God, you know what? I'm coming into covenant with this word. I'm listening to the word and I'm coming into covenant with it because I've been through hell. Like God, I give me my blessing. Like give me my blessing is like, you know, you know, or I'm not going to let you go until you bless me is letting God know. I know what it costs to have faith, right? I know what it, what it costs because I had to battle against the ridicule. I had to lose the friends, but God, I'm still standing. You think that the enemy is happy that the sexual abuse didn't kill me, right? He wanted the sexual abuse to mark my life. He wanted the drugs to take over. He wanted the religious, you know, religion and, 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 and those statues and that, that fake faith, right? He wanted, the enemy wanted me to be consumed with that. He wanted me to be depressed and marked because of my failed relationships, because of the things that I couldn't control in the ministry, because of the way things fell apart. Like the enemy wants us, amen, continuously, amen, to not believe in God's power, to not believe in his will, to not believe in his, in God's, in, in God's purpose. But the fact that we're here all right, still standing, the fact that we're here still saying to God, like, God, I'm not going to let you go, right? Until you bless, bless me. I feel like it speaks a multitude. Like, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, until you give me my blessing. I feel like that speaks volumes that you don't even have to say the whole paragraph. You don't even have to say, amen, the whole sentence, because those words are enough for Jacob to be in that position and say, you know, I'm not letting you go. Like, you're not going back to the kingdom of God, then you're not going to go see God until you bless me here on earth because I need the blessing. And look at what happens in response to Jacob's act of faith. It says that Jacob was given, right, a new name. Amen. And his name that he was given was Israel. Amen. It says by faith, Jacob was given a new name. And not only that, he was given a new destiny. You know what's that? That God changed his story. He changed his story and he made, you know, he took beauty from his ashes the same way he's doing for each and every one of us. Like God is taking the, the, the ashes out of you and he's making beauty, amen, out of all of it. But you got to be willing, amen, for, to go through the process, to go through the wilderness and tell people, you know what? Just go ahead of me. You know, sometimes you you got to have a pity party. Sometimes I'll be against the pity parties, <clears throat> but sometimes you need to have a pity party with the Lord. You need to have a pity party with the spirit of God. Amen. Because the spirit of God is going to testify of your tears. He's going to see what's hurting you. He's going to see like, all right, this person is really for the kingdom. This person is really for the souls. And I'm going to bless this person. This is why do you think, right? People who are really for the kingdom, they have to go through this. This is why we need to stick together. This is why we can't play those games like, oh, I like you one day and then the next day I don't like you. Or, oh, you my brother today and I like you, but then tomorrow you not. We can't have that type of spirit that the world has. We have to understand, perate. We're in the battlefield. Corey is my sister in faith. Carolyn is my sister in the faith. Gina, all of you guys, Rocio, all of you guys are my sister in the faith. So you are in the battlefield. So I can't leave you alone in the battlefield. Regardless, if you got a problem with me, we speak it out. But if you have these hidden feelings like, oh, I like you one day. Mm, I don't like this about you. And you don't know the person. You haven't like took time to get to know them. To, you know, ask the Holy Spirit about who they are. You can't just listen to what. But, right, if you you know like me based on what everybody else says about me, guess what? Especially people that I've encountered in ministry, you really not gonna like me because they in the ministry and they really don't like me, and they're not doing anything with their faith, they're not doing anything with their family, with their job, they have no hope, they are dry as bones, okay, dead bones. But when you connect yourself to people who are in the spirit, who are hopeful, amen, in the things of God, who are willing to embrace 
embrace. You know, the things that they get hit with, you know, people who've been ridiculed are, you know, will be, you know, love me much more because they'll be like, you know what? No, I like you because, you know, I've been ridiculed and you've been ridiculed and you know what? We both overcomers. Like we both are in the battlefield and we both fighting for our faith, right? We both trying to move forward. We're both trying to overcome the hurt. We're both trying to, you know, reach the our destiny, reach our kingdom mandate, right? Um, <laughs> uh, Wanda said, I remember, amen, when you were on the phone and I kept um sliding and I remember you telling me to keep my faith, amen. Um, yes, and God in the center, amen, and it stuck to me because of all that my faith is stronger, amen, to God be all the glory because even Wanda, right? Wanda reminds me so much of me, like back in the days, like when I used to fall, right? And I used to backslide like so much, right? She really like reminds me so much, amen, of me, right? Because when I went to church, and people were ridiculing me, right? And people were making me feel bad, right? About who I am, right? And and the type of Christian I am. So that makes me relatable, amen? So all girls that are from Brooklyn, all girls that are from the Bronx, all girls that are from the hood, why? Because I know what it's like, amen, to be, amen, in the hood, grow up in the hood and go through, right? All of these crazy things in life and have religious people just label you and not want to help you fight for your faith, not, you know, they so focus on criticizing and talking and gossiping and looking like they are church than actually being a church. So because, why do I say that? Because I learned that, amen, from the street. I learned that from my environment. So that allows me to judge things, right, based on what I see is truth, right, because of my background, right? So the way I look at church, do you think I came from the hood? Do you think I I came from real sin and and seeing people sh getting robbed and 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 killed and getting people you know that that literally were struggling were broke with no money and like you know seeing just angry people bitter people like you think I really came from that environment to come into the kingdom of God to allow people to corrupt my spirit no if I had to protect myself in these environments and fight for my own life right and I didn't take that lightly because I understood that if you were weak, right, and you folded and you trusted the wrong people, what does that mean? That means that it's off with your head, right? So when you surround yourself in the kingdom of God and you see how lightly they take their faith, when you see how lightly they take the things of the kingdom, this is why your spirit, right, it clashes with other people's spirit. Thank you, hallelujah. I think the internet finally came back, amen. When you see people, amen, that are, you know, in the kingdom of God, but are not willing to pay the same price you are, right? Because people in the hood, they come from that environment where they're fighting every single day, you know, against people who want to, you know, belittle them, who want to try to get over on them, right? So when you come from those environments, when you are literally standing on your own two feet, you know, by yourself, you're protecting yourself, right? You're, you're fighting against, you know, the things that are happening in your surroundings, it helps you and it equips you. This is why you can't let other people who grow up in little picket fences, right? Who grew up and don't speak the way you speak, don't look the way you look, don't dress the way you look. Like you can't let people look at you and judge you and make you feel bad about your faith. You need to keep fighting for your faith. You need to keep fighting for your position in the kingdom of God because they didn't qualify you. They didn't give you the calling God. God did. Amen. God already approved you. God already gave you an assignment. So you have to fight your faith and you have to be willing, <clears throat> amen, to look at God and say, God, I want this new name. I want this new destiny because in response to Jacob's faith, he was given the new name, given the new identity. And look at what the Bible says. No longer, amen, would he be Jacob the deceiver. Amen. So Jacob was a deceiver because of his surrounding, because of what he saw and because of what he wanted. 
amen, but it didn't limit God. It limits men because they look at you and they put you like, oh, you a failure and you this and you that, but guess what, amen, uh, <laughs> amen, you this and you that, right? So God <clears throat> will not look at what everybody else sees. He will literally look at you the way the kingdom wants to look at you. And it says no longer will he be Jacob the deceiver. Instead, it would be Israel, a name given to God and a chosen nation. And I pray that, amen, today over each and every one of you today. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray, amen, over each and every one of my brothers and sisters today, Father God, that have been listening to this word. Father God, I pray against every satanic attack, amen, Father God, that has been attacking them, every assignment sent from the pits of hell that has been making them feel like they never gonna be anybody that has been trying to disqualify them, Father God, from, you know, believing that they are somebody in the kingdom, that there is a space for them in the kingdom. Father God, every enemy, Father God, that has been battling against them, we bind them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft spirit, amen, Father God, that has been trying to pour doubt and confusion into their life. Can you say that, amen, right from where you are? Can you bind, amen, those spirits? Can you bind those demonic forces now in the mighty name of Jesus? Say it, bind it. Don't be afraid to bind demons. Say it, you know, with all your heart, with all your soul, say, I bind those demons attacking me, attacking my health, <clears throat> attacking my family attacking my children, attacking my purpose. Let it out. Amen. Cry. Amen. Let it out. I don't care if you at work. I don't care if you in the car. I don't care if you at school, wherever you at. Amen. Sometimes when the spirit of God comes, you know, close to us and, and, and he comes around us. Amen. He, even when I went to church, right. Um, this week, um, this past week in Quito, right. What did I say to the Lord? I'm like, Lord, please not now, not now when I got into the church, because I just got there like nobody knows me and I'm over here like boiling and I'm like Lord please I'm trying to make my lashes <laughs> amen not fall off but what did the Lord do <clears throat> I couldn't control it when his spirit amen started to you know because that's what happens when you're hungry that's what happens when you're listening to the word that's what happens when you open up your heart it allows god amen to pass through Jeanette's house wherever she's at right now it allows you know god to meet gina and wanda where you guys are at right now here where i'm at god's presence is here amen with each and every one of us amen and his will amen is to give us the peace amen is to give us the confidence amen is to give us the certainty amen is to give us hallelujah the clarity amen is to give us the boldness amen is to give us the boldness to do what to hear the word of God. So when you're fighting for your faith, remember in your heart, write this down, Romans 10, 17. It says, so your faith, it comes back by hearing and hearing the word of God. So while you're in the battlefield, while you are battling against all this, these principalities, don't forget to hold tight, amen, onto the word and know that everything, God, I pray that your will, amen, may be manifest in their life. I pray, Father God, right now that you will change their heart, that you would change their name, Amen. That you would change their story, Father God, and that you would make of them a great nation, that you would equip them, amen, with the things that they need to be equipped, Father God, that you would give them the assignment, that you would give them excuse me, Holy Spirit, the vision that you would give them the bonus that they need, Father God, to overcome all of the challenges that have been sent to destroy them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. So like I said, that's all. Amen. I have, you know, for you guys today, 
Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share it with your friends and don't forget to be encouraged, amen, with everything that you're going through. Don't forget to continue praying for this ministry, blessing this ministry, <clears throat> you know, um, helping this ministry advance and, you know, praying for me, praying for my family because just like you're fighting for your faith, just know that we are over here fighting for our faith as well. We're all fighting for the will of God, amen, to be manifested and for us to be able to advance the kingdom and just move it forward the way God sees fit. Amen. To God be all the glory, Jason. Amen. So I love you guys. Remember, if you like these videos, you're going to see them next the, for the next two Fridays. And if you want to um, get on the waiting list, just write me here on Facebook or check out my website. Um, you can put your name, your email, your information so that when the website opens up again in April, you guys can connect with us. Amen. Each week, the the same way we are doing here. Amen. So um, I love you guys and I will catch you guys in the next video. God bless you guys. Bye.